Welcome back to the channel. So when I started the All About Bartley podcast a few years ago now, one of the biggest reasons for that was to try and spread awareness on different issues and how, how disabled people get affected in society. And, you know, it was mainly through having conversations of having that, you know, relatable sense of what people go through in their lives from a, from a mental perspective and the things that we have to deal with and how we cope with our struggles and things like that. And to show that when you remove that physical barrier, we're all the same as humans. We all go through similar emotions. We deal with them in different ways and we, we, we experience them in different ways. But the, the fact of the matter is we're all the same species. We're all dealing with the same set of emotions. Nobody's feeling something totally different to what any other humans experienced. And I think that obviously there's so many different vari variations to that and different experiences you can have. But one of the reasons why I want to do that is I want to show that we as people that are in wheelchairs or with any disability anywhere are not as alien as we appear to be. You know, there's a lot of people that will say to me, I didn't think about that till I met you or I didn't realise that this wasn't accessible or that wasn't accessible. And this is what I want to talk about here today on the channel is one of the biggest things that affected me in my life is the access to places everywhere all the time. Um, I'm now 27 years old and when I was going into um, night outs and school and stuff like that in college, it was all, you know, all the clubs had stairs, all the places everyone wanted to go, none of them had access. And all I would hear was, you know, it'll get better. It'll get better over the next, you know, few years or 10 years or 20 years. It's now, you know, a decade or so later and everything is pretty much the same when it comes to access. A lot of these clubs and bars are not accessible. The, I mean, if you go into Glasgow, you know, people love going to Firewater. People love going to the Cavs. Two places that I've never been in in my life and never will be because they have two massive flights of stairs down to them. Um, and then one thing that I was always told is that will improve, that will improve. And I'm sitting here as an adult talking to you right now and saying, it has not improved. These buildings are still here. And this argument of, oh, we can't change it because, um, you know, these buildings are old and all this. They're always going to be old if you don't start changing them. You know, and there's this idea of, I'm talking about clubs, but if you, if you look at from a wider aspect of transport, buses, trains, Taxis, everything's becoming less and less accessible. Taxis are becoming more regular cars with no, without any ramps. And Bishop Briggs, I used to have a phone and they had this rule that every taxi they had had to ha have a, a accessible ramp. So no matter who I phoned, what, you know, when I phoned, any taxi that I would get would have a ramp and I didn't have to worry about it. Now, a lot of these taxis, because of the because of the prices and because of how things have changed, that rule's now away and all of these taxes have changed to regular cars to be more like your Ubers and stuff like that. Now, when you've went from everyone having a ramp to a small percentage of taxis having ramps and a lot of them, if they were if they were going to get a new car, would choose not to have a ramp because they don't want the the hassle. Um, and, that, and I literally got in here here today through a taxi where the taxi driver told me himself that there are quite a few taxi drivers that, are, that will decide to get a non-accessible taxi taxi because they don't want the hassle and they're, not, they're no longer held accountable for that either. So this is increasingly becoming a problem where there is a lack of accountability to have access and a lack of a want to have access. And when you look at it from from a disabled person's perspective, I'm obviously in a wheelchair, but anyone that has any struggle with any sort of movement, whether you're disabled, elderly, or anything else, these things are getting becoming more of an, more of an issue. Look at trains. Every, every train station that I would go to had ramps, but now we're in a situation where there are, I, can't, I can no longer go to Charing Cross, to go from Charing Cross to Queen Street, because they don't have ramps at that station and they need to have someone on the train and sometimes that's not the case. So now you're having to gamble whether you're going to have access or not all the time on these different trains. So there's actual train stations that have had their ramps taken away 
for them because the ramps weren't um, so-called efficient for what they were doing. But now you're going through months with not being able to use it. You know, you having to go to a train station, wanting to get on a train, but having to guess whether you're going to be able to go on or not based on if somebody's on the train or not, which is totally unacceptable. And then you move on to buses. In the UK and Scotland, you can't go on a bus. Um, you can't have more than one wheelchair user on a bus. You can have more than one pram user on a bus, but not more than one wheelchair user on a bus. And I went to Geneva quite recently uh, in Switzerland, and I literally was sitting on a bus with four other wheelchair users, and there was not a problem at all about it. And so I've been on, I've been waiting on a bus in the rain where there was a wheelchair user on it, and I could not, and they would not let me on it. I was getting soaked and the, it was absolutely drenching me in the rain and I was getting soaked and I couldn't get on the, the bus because another wheelchair user was on it and they drove past me. So why are we at 20, you know, we're in 2024 and still having a conversation about how for all this technology and all this, all the things we have, we're not including people. And you might be listening to me and going, why is this, what... What is it about this that's so important? Well, you need to look at it, the whole big picture. When you're when you're a wheelchair user, you have any disability. Getting about is more difficult, and the 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 less access that we have to transport, the less we're able to take part in society. We're more excluded. We're more we're, we have less opportunities to socialize. We have less opportunities to progress in our careers because we don't know how we're going to get about, how we're going to be able to go from here to there. You know, public transport is such a key er area to allowing disabled people to be part of society and to have their own ability to go anywhere we want and do whatever we want to do. And that is the thing that makes disability so prevalent for me in my day-to-day -day life is not not being able to access the same venues, the same, the same transport, the same opportunities as other people and that has nothing to do with the fact I can't walk and everything to do with the fact that with the fact that we are not creating accessible platforms and trains buses taxis and clubs and bars and things like that this is not the the problem the problem that I had for most of my um, childhood and most of my you know teenage years was believing that it was my fault I believe that the reason why I couldn't access these things was because I could not walk. But the bottom line is, I've not had a choice in that matter. I've never had a choice to decide whether I could walk or not. Nobody came up to me and went, Keen, do you want to be in a wheelchair or not? And I went, I fancy being in a wheelchair. And it gets talked about, a lot of the blame gets put on us, gets put on disabled people to say, well, you know, it's a shame you can't walk, this is why... This is why you can't access this. But no, that conversation has to change. The tone has to change. Point the finger at the people that can change things. You know, th th this this notion that, or oh, these buildings are too old, or these these taxes are too old, or this bus is, you know, you know, it'd be too difficult to change this. But if we don't change it now, it's good. All they're going to do is get older, and nothing's and the the same problem that I'm talking about is going to be here. 10, 20, 30 years from now, but surely as a society, we should be looking to evolve that, we should be looking to change that, because you might be listening to me and thinking, well, I'm fully able, I'm young, I, this isn't this isn't a problem for me, but I want to let you know that this is a problem for everyone, because you are going to get older, and at one point, you are going to you are going to be less able than you are right now. That is not, it's not a, Debate, that's not a, you know, question. That is a fact of life. And the more that we make things unaccessible in the long term, that costs money. That's going to make more issues because as everyone gets older, we're, we're, we're less able to access more and more things. And when you're still, you know, defending these buildings, these politicians, all these people that are not fighting these issues... You're just creating less and less access, more more reasons for, you know, minority groups like the elderly, like disabled people, to be excluded from society as life goes on. And it's just we shouldn't we should be at a point in this day and age now where that is just not acceptable. It cannot be acceptable anymore. The amount of train stations that are not that have 
so many stairs where you can't even go to them. It, it's absolutely ridiculous. I was on a train recently going down to England and we'd, I'd, I'd pre-booked it two weeks in advance. There was They all knew about it. I got to the train station and um, it was about four or five people working there, all put me on it, all saying it was good to go. I get on the train, about 10 minutes before I get to my stop, the conductor comes on and goes, oh, are you getting off at this stop? You can't get off here because it's not get, um, there's no wheelchair access at the station. So then I had to go 45 minutes away from the stop that I was going to be at and have to get a taxi back from there. But my point is, is that, I, you know, why is that still allowed? How can that possibly still be a thing that we're allowing now in this, in this day and age? And the, the notion that, you know, how do we change these things because these buildings are old and all this, if that continues, it's never going to change. We have to start calling this stuff out because it's what excluded me from so many social things as a teenager and so many social events and just and had and built us really negative um, self-image I had of myself, really looking at myself in a way of being a burden on society and a burden on people around me and, you know, losing losing the chance to kind of experience your teenage years and your young adult years the way that everyone else gets to, not because you're disabled, not because you're in a wheelchair, not because you can't walk, but because there is no access to the places that can, that could have access. At the end of the day, there is no reason why these builds can't have access to them and there is no reason why we can't hold them accountable for it. And that is what needs to happen from all public transport to all these clubs and pubs that have been the same way for decades now, something needs to change, something needs to give. And your voice in this is just an important. You are one slip in the shower away from being in the same place I've been just now. Keep, you know, keep that in mind. There's this idea that nobody has the right to be fully able. Nobody has the right to be able to walk on their own two feet. Anything can happen to you at any point. And the minute it happens to you, I swear to God, you'll notice all these things at once and you go, I can't believe the lack of access. Me, you know, when I first met Paul, um, we went to Tesco, that's around the corner from the studio, and it took me, what would take him, you know, five minutes, took me half an hour because I had to go down the slow curbs and I had to find the right points to turn. And he looked at me and he said, I didn't even realise how long something like that would take. Something that would take me five minutes took you at least half an hour to get back back and forth to a shop that was right around the corner and it's purely out of, a, out of a lack of access. Now things take longer for us, I get that, but the point is is that we need to be including everybody that we can, particularly you know, disabled people and the elderly, in these things more and more because we're alienating a big chunk of society. We're, we're, see the fact of the matter is, right, Everybody, I keep hearing everyone talk about equality and how, you know, we want equal equal rights, you know, all around for everyone. But, the, you know, for me, equality does not exist fully. And the reason for that is without the right to equal access, equality cannot exist. Because that, for equality to exist, everyone should have an equal opportunity to access everything that they want, whether they're in a wheelchair or not. And right now, as I'm sitting here talking to you in 2024, that is not the case. So that is something for me that I want to use my platform, my voice to say to you, we need to change this together. And you need to understand that you, whether you're disabled or not, have a voice in this in this argument, have a voice in this debate. And if we don't start pushing on it, it means that the next kid that was in the same situation that I am is going to grow up with the same self-loading, the same self-esteem issues, the same, you know, person blaming themselves or bl herself or wh whoever for their situation that they had no control over. How can we allow somebody to go through your life feeling that bad about themselves purely because we haven't bothered to try and fight this the way that we should? So please realise that we all have a part to play in this, we all have a voice in this, and if you can share that and push to the right people, get it, Let's get some momentum behind the fact that these things do need to change sooner rather than later. There's no reason why we can't hold the people that are, that are running things accountable to make it change 
because it will be better for everyone long term. It will save money long term, and it will and it will allow people to have the the rights that they deserve, just like healthcare, just like anything else. We have the right to have access to any building or any transport that we want to have. And that has nothing to do with it, with my disability or anyone else's and everything to do with the fact that these places are not being designed in the right accessible way for everyone to access it. So it's, it's about time that we, we gather together and try and take action on this. And this is something I wanted to use my platform to talk about and hopefully you can take this message and we can really push on from here. But I just wanted to raise awareness from it and let you all know that, you know, you you can have a part to play in this as well as me, whether you're disabled or not. And I hope that you have taken some sort of motivation to try and tackle this with me as we go on and we can make things better for everybody. But I hope you enjoyed the video and much more content to come. Cheers for watching and I'll see you again soon.